What is happening there? Super, super excited. We got 14 draft horses. I don't want to step on your toes. Her back looks terrible, but she's not painful, and she's only like 22. We're coming in in stages today, which I actually think are really nice. So this is Winnie again. I did a training session with her a couple weeks ago for training Tuesday. Um, she had a lot of good releases in that training session. So we're gonna build on that a little bit today and see if I can get those releases again. And then we're gonna add on to what we do as well. We'll probably work on a little bit of sending around. Um, I might start some desensitizing around her hind end to get her ready for me to pick up her back feet and then just go over all the other basic groundwork things. I'm not trying to force her over here. I want her to do it on her own. Right there, she just touched me with her whisker. So I'll give her a break on that. I know people were a little concerned about me confusing her with that kissing, because that's how you want to ask for speed sometimes too. But if I'm asking for speed, especially when I'm in the saddle, I'll have a few different cues I use and I will kiss repeatedly to try to get her to pick that speed up. Just one kiss here and there, it's not gonna confuse the horse. It's just gonna get their attention back on you. So I'll use that pressure point right there on the top of her head too to help her relax a little bit. And I'll work on patting her down her neck. And I'm watching her ears. If she starts to get concerned, I'll go ahead and stop that. My goal here is just to be able to pet her everywhere over here without her trying to move her feet. When she goes to move her feet, I'll just step back over here and just go right back to it. She let me get pretty far on that side too. So I'll give her another little break here. Let her think about all that stuff. Now I'm gonna work on that. A few other things here. I'm gonna work on asking her to lower her head. She does pretty well with this. I'd like to see her drop just a little bit more. I don't want her pushing into me, so if she does, I'll ask her to back up. I'm gonna ask her to drop that head again. So ideally, while I'm working with her, this is the position I'd like to have her head in throughout most of it. I want her to be relaxed. Good job. So that's the most I've gotten her to lower her head since I've been working with her. Good job. So when I'm putting horses up, when I'm taking this halter off of them, I'll take it off and I'll hold it there until the horse is paying attention to me and then I'll leave first. That will help your horses be with you more. Um, if you just take the halter off and let them run away from you. That's pretty much them learning that they can get away from you without you even realizing it. So always make sure you leave your horse first. So we've got some more puppies today and dogs that we're gonna do surgery on so they can be adapted out. Horse Plus has a policy that any adoptable animals need to be spayed or neutered first. So um, we're gonna hopefully get some of those taken care of today so we can get some of them to upcoming adoption events. To the floor. Look at this giant derpy puppy. Hi, sir. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah, come on, honey. 
Oh, you're such a little tub. Come here. I know, look at it. Oh, come here. Oh, hi. Oh my goodness, hi, precious. Yeah. Oh, hi, we still have our baby toothsies. Yeah. Hi, do you have two nuts? Oh. Where's your other testicle? There we go, I found it! Yay! <coughs> I'm just gonna listen to your heart and lungs, okay? It's got a full belly. Um, yeah, your heart sounds very nice. He's young enough that we do not need to heartworm test him. Casey, will you hand me um, the stethoscope that's up there? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I know I'm almost done. He's a good boy. I bet you have some roundworms in your belly. You could have a fun contest and try to predict the GI parasites <laughs> present. Oh, the sleeping puppy. He's not even drugged. Really? Yeah. No. That's just him. He just relaxed, huh? Yeah. It's too funny. Yeah. Oh man, that was pretty sticky. Wow. Can I have your okay. legs, sir? Can you get up the right way? Can you get upright? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. He's gonna be huge. This is a big puppy. This is boo. So how well I'm perfect. Are you, are you thinking about screaming? Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. Excuse okay. me? All right, I'm gonna give it in the other leg. A squeeze me? Quick. Okay. Oh, thanks. Well, it's not the dirtiest thing that's been on you today. I'm going to have to kind of like squeeze in behind the table and hug it all with me so we're not super much of the text today. Small room. You just think about that. This doesn't necessitate the level of sterility that a spay does, because when we're spaying them, we're actually opening yes. all of the layers of the abdomen. Um, for a neuter, we're essentially opening the skin over the scrotum. Um, <clears throat> as long as they don't have a hernia from the abdomen into the scrotum, we don't really have any communication with an essential body cavity. So the prep for those procedures is, is vastly different. Yes, there's all different kinds of knots, um, depending on what you're doing. And like what access you have and what suture material you're using. What suture size you're using. Two watt. And it's PDS. Two watt PDS antimicrobial taper needle. And you're doing a modified Miller. Modified Miller. Two layer closure. Correct. I feel like we might not even need skin glue, but we're a wee pup. We are up here in quarantine. We're going to preg check a mare. We're going to do an exam on a mare that has confirmed to be pregnant but has really severe lung sounds. Um, she's not doing super well, so we're gonna evaluate whether we need to change antibiotics or not. 
Um, we are evaluating another horse that's lame and we believe is a crypt orchid, but we need to confirm. Um, and we're making sure that we're all set up. We've got auction tomorrow and then auction intake on Wednesday. So that's a whirlwind and we wanna make sure that we're all ready to go. Um, thankfully, the Strangles outbreak was super well managed. Um, the techs and all the staff did a great job. So we only have four animals that are still symptomatic, but we no longer believe those animals to be contagious. Um, and we have to make sure that everything up here has been fully decontaminated so that we don't get anybody else sick on intake. So our ultrasound has been a little finicky. So I'm going old school here. Pretty sure I'm feeling ribs. I'm trying to be really gentle because it's difficult to confirm like exactly where I am. I don't feel fetal movement. So like that paint mare, that baby like shoved back at me. Here's an unhappy chicken over there. Oh, is that a hawk after her? Casey, run, run, save that chicken. Run, 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 run over there, run. It didn't get it. It didn't get it. The chicken's in there with the donkeys. I'm sorry for yelling at you and telling you to do stuff. So I think that there is a very, very high likelihood that this mare is pregnant and that she is um, later term. I still think she would be okay to travel, but she's got some utter development. Is the chicken okay? Okay. Yeah, the chicken um, is right over there. Okay, so I'm calling this mare pregnant. I'm not 100% sure, but I am almost positive that I felt transverse ribs and xiphoid process of baby, and I would put this mare in during third trimester. So we just got done in quarantine. Um, we re-pregnancy checked one of the horses we brought in. She is confirmed pregnant, so we have two mamas now and we brought horses down from quarantine as well as some donkeys and then we did some health exams because we have a shelter who is transferring horses tomorrow as well. It was Tanner's birthday yesterday um, so I made brownies and I'm gonna you know light these. It's gonna be her makeshift uh, birthday cake. Happy birthday yellow cake for another trip around the sun okay. it's your birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear tanner happy birthday to you thank you yay let us have candles. <laughs> Thank you, Owen. So uh, the previous jack had gotten broken and it was like <laughs> trying to move it. And Owen went and got another one on here and look how easy it is. So nice. We are headed to the auction. It is raining and wet weather, um, but uh, we're gonna rescue a lot of horses. It's been kind of chaotic. It's yes, Giving Tuesday very. and we're trying to do post and we're trying to get everything else done. And now we get to go for a two and a half hour drive and um, we'll be fundraising on the way. Yeah, sure enough. That's what we do. Exactly. You ready? We finally got all our ducks in a row and we are finally leaving. We have three people on our truck? Yes. Where are we putting our luggage? On our laps. Put it in the overhead of the this net. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh, here's, here's the manager. She knows what's going on. Hey, <laughs> what's the question? No question. She's just filming. I was just making conversation. So we're ready to go now. I have to get my coat. <laughs> well, you better hurry. They're leaving without you. All right. So um, there's more people than space. So we are going to put our overnight luggage in the horse trailer overhead. And we're going to make this work. I don't know. Sometimes rescue life is, is very interesting and discombobulating. And um, I think 
Auction Rescue on Giving Tuesday is like a little complicated because we're fundraising so much on Giving Tuesday and doing an auction rescue. Yeah, yeah. there's just a lot going on right now. <clears throat> but we got this. We're going to go yeah, save some horses. Oh, don't get the jackets all wet. What are we gonna do? Here, I don't know what we're gonna you want to wear a plus sweatshirt? Oh. I mean, I have lots of outerwear. Oh. Okay, so I made some hot drink here. It's not coffee, and uh, some she hot balanced cocoa. it delicately. I balanced it, and then Jason decided to move some stuff, and it sent my cup flying into his lap. And now we've got hot cocoa all over the place. So, it's all over the floor. Yeah, that's fine, but that's why we have rubber seats. So, in this door, there's a towel. Maybe it'll be dried off by the time we get there. That should be. There's worse things to be covered at. I told you <clears throat> earlier that. Um, How about I just stand aside for a minute? We'll count the That auction days can be strange. And I always bring an extra pair of pants and I forgot this time and I'm like, nah, it's fine. Nothing ever happens and I never need them. And look at my drink, like I hardly have any left now. She's like, what my Well, hey everybody, it's Jason. I am here at the auction tonight, live, and you're probably gonna see some flashing in the background because it's thundering and lightning. And it's a crazy rainy cold night and we're here at the auction to save lives. Unfortunately, there's over a hundred horses here tonight. And I can tell you, I know we're not gonna be able to save all hundred, but with your support, we can save a lot of them. But what's really crazy is there's like 30 draft horses and I know everybody loves rescuing draft horses. They're, they cost a bit more because they weigh more, right? So horses are sold by the pound and draft horses are gonna cost a little bit more to save than regular horses. I don't know how many we're going to end up with. It'd be amazing if we could rescue like 10 of the draft horses and uh, keep them safe from slaughter. 700, 500, five, she rides too. 500, up there, up there. So far we have rescued 15 horses here at the auction. We rescued 13 draft horses. And right now we're going to treat a few. So Jenna's got all that info. Yes, we figured we would uh, get a head start on treating them so that we were not here as late tonight. And we all like that plan. So <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> Early bedtime. I'll take my chances. I believe in dancing. No. When the time get hard, I ain't afraid to work. I watch the sunrise like it's the last time. I might ever get to see her smile. It's a budding unicorn. Well, I Most likely, like squamous cell carcinoma in the eye. It's really bad, really painful. Um, so we're gonna give some IV pain meds tonight. I don't think he's visual at all. He would act pretty weird when I, maybe he is. But when I first touched his forehead, he flinched pretty bad. I don't think he's very visual in the right eye. He does have vision in the left eye. This horse could be a little bit um, blind in the right eye, but we're gonna have the vet take a look when we get back and determine that for sure. 
So this horse's back left leg is completely swollen. It looks like from, um, man, about right below the hip, all the way down to the tuff. What's that joint called again? The stifle? Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. It's late. I've been here a while. Um, but yeah, from it's stifled down, it's just completely swollen. I don't know what's going on with that. Can she walk on it though? Yeah, she's been putting weight on it. Okay, that's what I, that's my main concern if we we're looking at broken. So they all have cornered themselves and there's the down panel over there. I'm going to walk around to see if I can push them back this way and get that panel picked up so it's not in the way and we don't have to worry about a horse stepping in it and breaking its leg. I think he's talking to us. I think we're supposed to be paying attention. We're not. You want to be my emotional support animal? My new office horse? Sorry. But we just got done treating our most critical draft horses. Um, a lot of them need weight, have arthritis like that, but we had two with really bad eye masses, one with an extremely swollen leg, but it can put weight on it, so I don't think it's broken. I think it's more infection, we'll have the vets take a look at that. Um, and then, it's coming for us. Oh, that's not our horse. Corey lied to us. Yeah, we got a lot of really, really sweet babies this time. I'm really excited. So the auction just ended. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many horses or animals that we saved. I think it's upwards around 18 though. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go out to the truck and regroup. Hey everybody, so we rescued a lot of horses tonight. We rescued 20 horses during the sale and then one more after the sale. And just super, super excited. We got 14 draft horses, which is a huge number of drafts. It's pouring rain. It's almost midnight. Our rescue team is exhausted, but the horses are treated. Uh, Jenna, our vet tech, went through and made sure everybody was comfortable for the night. And tomorrow morning, just a few hours, we're going to be uh, doing the auction assessment. And can't wait to share with you. And it's going to be done live on YouTube and Facebook if we've got cell phone service in the morning. So again, these are some of the 21 horses that we rescued. And in that was 14 draft horses. And that is a huge number of draft horses. So it's going to be uh, quite fun getting them all loaded up on the trailer tomorrow back to the shelter safely. It's very, very windy and um, chilly here this morning, but we're gonna get these guys loaded up and uh, hit the road as soon as we can um, because it's it's really cold. We're just trying 
to figure out where to um, do the assessment. Usually we do it outside, but it's really windy and it's really cold. Um, but if we're under here, we don't have good cell service, so. But we got to make sure we make everything run smoothly. That's the top priority. And if we can do a live assessment, we will. But our safety and the animal's safety is the top priority. We're not just 100% sure because we're all out in the... And if we move them back, we can do it just right under the roof and we'll still have the cell service to do the lives, but it's not... Um... Alrighty, we're, <laughs> we're chasing horses now. So uh, we just got back to the auction. We're going to be running the horses down um, to the back pens. We have service back there and then we're going to start our live assessment. We're ready to start the live assessment and get these guys everything they need and um, make sure they're going to travel well with their buddies and then we'll be loading up and hitting the road but we got to get this assessment done first. Good morning everyone. I just wanted to say good morning and that we are doing our live auction assessment. We'll be bringing through a lot of draft horses today. Um, and draft mules, so it's, it's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna be passing my camera off because I'm getting photos of each one. And then um, we have a mule coming up here. And I'm gonna pass this over to um, Angela real quick. That's a really awesome draft mule. Um, it's a, a mule that's been through multiple auctions. It has multiple auction tags on its body. Um, so it's been around for a little bit, but when horses and mules and are in the slaughter pipeline, they'll go from one auction to another, to another, to another, until ultimately they get to the Mexican border. And so uh, we, we definitely want to intercept as many of those as we can and save them from continuing down the slaughter pipeline. And then just like right in the corner there and, and hold. All right, right, right there. All right. It's hard getting pictures of these draft horses because they're so big. So I'm taking pictures of each side of their body and they're um, just turn him this way. And then you can see his eye is really, really bad. All right, right there. Um, yeah. Um, Look at this. It's, it's probably 
It could be like a tumor that comes in over the eyeball. His eye might be behind that, um, but we really won't know until our medical team's really able to look at it. But um, I, I have seen some cases where they have been removed and the horse is able to see behind there and stuff so easy, buddy. Like he can't see that we're over here. So he'll have a whole medical evaluation to determine what's going on with him and what he needs. Um, we don't want to put an animal through an unnecessary surgery if they're suffering from other medical complications. Let me just make sure I got all the pictures and we can send him. Yep. So we have a doggy surrender. It's a little chihuahua and um, they came quite a little distance to meet us here at auction during the intake to surrender a little dog. So I'm going out to um, to take care of that for them to get the little doggy. So uh, they're going to be uh, evicted from their home and they needed a place for the dog to go and since it was such a little dog couldn't say no so I'm gonna go take care of that now I was just asking if you have the little dog yeah yeah yes? okay. shag 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 yeah are you okay with being filmed yeah I, I don't okay then I'll just have you I don't have no problems with it you don't have any problems no, with it we okay I have no problems with being filmed Well, hello, baby. Yeah, she's a good little dog, yeah. Let me see what you're doing. Home. And we got some food over there if you need it. We okay, got a that whole, would be great. Whole big bag of food. That she only would, eats cat food. That would be great. She only eats cat food. The draft horse we just saw is a nice young draft horse and that's really awesome. Um, there's so many draft horses this auction but we're going to winter and hay prices are really high. Draft horses eat a lot and there are a lot of draft horses used in this community with Amish, uh, a lot of Amish communities that we have. Um, they use them for plowing their fields and so um, in this situation going into winter it's not too surprising that there's so many draft horses. I'm just so thankful for your support that allowed us to save so many. Um, this is the largest draft horse rescue that we've done. Um, and that's pretty exciting that we were able to save so many. And again, that's only thanks to your supporters. We can't do this work without you. And you truly do make a difference. 1665. One thing we're doing different this month is we are not saying exactly what we're seeing. If we see something, we'll say it. Like, you know, there's, there's issues here and stuff, but Jenna is making all the medical notes back there. And we don't have to, I don't have to say everything I'm seeing to send to the medical team now, because we used to have just Doc waiting. We'd take notes that I'm seeing and send it back. But now I'm like, we had a little meeting. We're like, you know, how are vet tech here? Why are we doing double notes? So. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's better so far so good we have um, a couple criticals but with this many draft horses that is to be expected but I'm actually really pleasantly uh, pleased at the condition of a lot of these I think a lot of it's just age they probably been worked hard their whole life and they didn't want them anymore but we have seen much worse dropped off here this is a very very big mule I don't know I know we've had some big mules before, but hey bud, this has got to be close to 17 hands. Tony can still reach the top of its withers, but just barely. <laughs> that's that's a big mule. Yes. Yeah, this is this is a very big mule. I'm thinking it's close to 17 hands. Like he's he's a stout, big, giant mule. 1657. I love this one so much. No, I'm not taking it home. Yes, I love them. 
So I have a funny story on this horse. So last night when we got to the auction, uh, we got back here and then a bull was loose. And so we all hopped panels and Faye and I hopped into this one's pen. And this horse just was like, hey, what's up? And it was our buddy while they were wrangling all the cattle for the night. So it was super, super sweet on this one too. Draft horses are so neat. That they're just so calm and chill, and um, they're used to being pulled out and worked all the time, plowing fields, and handling them is just a pleasure because they have such a calm, gentle spirit, and they're just they're so grateful. They're just these grateful, gentle giants, and I'm a little excited to get back to uh, our shelter with them because uh, Dr. Young and Dr. Scott, they both work with elephants at the Elephant Sanctuary, and now we have a bunch of giants ourselves. Yeah. They're not elephants, but they're just about as big as, I mean, they're bigger than a baby elephant, so, yeah. yeah. 16, 22. Yeah, we were told this one was pregnant. Um, lately, when they tell us they're pregnant, they have been, so. She has something wrong with her back end, doesn't she? She seems like she's having a hard time walking. Yeah. That's not good. So we have one that's got a really, really swollen leg. Um, can put weight on it, so we're not thinking that it's broken. Um, just probably at some point, really, really bad infection. Um, and then this one has growth starting on both eyeballs. Um, most likely cancerous, but we'll have the vets take a look at that. We have quite a few that have um, really, really bad eyes. So that will be interesting to actually do further diagnostics on. This is a really sad situation. This or Whoever owned this horse should have taken this horse to a vet and given it the last act of kindness. It can barely walk. And <clears throat> this is just a really, really sad situation. This horse has a medical condition that's affecting its day-to-day -day quality of life and causing it pain. We want to do the best thing for that animal and we have to be responsible. The owner should have done that. Instead, they dumped him into the slaughter pipeline. We intercepted him from being sent to Mexico, but now we have to be the responsible person if they're not adoptable and say, we're here for you in the end when your owner wasn't. And that's, that's always really, really hard, but it's the right thing to do. Somebody has to be there for these animals to show them love and kindness at the end of their lives instead of just abuse and torture the right until the end. My halter has been on there way too long. Yeah, she was so good. What number are you? Huh? I think it's a saddlebred. Yeah, and it's it's got a very straight back. And the head, I'm, I'm, I'd say saddlebred the whole way. This is shoulder out. Oh, got a shoulder out. Uh, this one, we don't know much about, but we were told it had a shoulder injury that could just be put back in. It's not how it works. Um, but really sweet horse. So we gave um, lots of pain meds and keep it comfortable until we can get back and Dr. Young can do a really thorough evaluation. <laughs> it's a sweet little dog. It's uh, 15 years old. It is partially deaf, but it's really sweet. Um, needs some care. Uh, I don't know what the outcome is oh, going to be. Yes, Corey. So this horse was in a pen that didn't have food. Like it was a muddy, like it was a dry pen. It was in a dry pen. So the reason I know this is you can look at it right here and this hair is all gone through here on the mane and on here. So this horse was putting its head through panels or boards to reach out and get food. And it's literally rubbed all the, the hair off of its neck. Its mane is like really short on that side um, because it was reaching through to get food and obviously we can see the horse is, was starving <clears throat> but that's how this horse was trying to get food and literally rubbed all the hair off of its neck trying to to reach out to get a blade of grass. Right on.
Well, that's okay. They're trying to help. Yes, they are. We're trying to help. This horse has gone through a lot. It's got a lot of scrapes and it's very, very skinny. This is the last horse, and yes, he is a stallion. Look at this teeth. Uh, I'm gonna guess he's about 12 years old, but when we get back to the shelter, we'll have the vet take another look and uh, give us a more accurate number. It's a big lick horse. So this horse was probably a show horse, like the length of his mane is not typical what you would see with a, a running around neglected type horse. Uh, his mane comes all the way down here. The shape of his feet and the stance he has made me think uh, a big lick horse. And then his tail tendons were cut, so. What, was he like four? I was gonna say about 12. Oh, I don't think he's 12. I've seen the gov angry bird starting right there. No, because he would have an eight year old horse right here if he hadn't ate yet. Thank you all so much for your support um, that made this auction rescue possible. Uh, the assessment is over now, and we're gonna get these horses loaded up on our trailers and back to our facility. And when I say back to our facility, we're going there. These horses haven't been there before, but we're getting them to safety where they're gonna get all the love and care they need. And um, uh, they should haul pretty well. There's gonna be a lot of weight in the trailers though, but there's like seven horses per trailer and we have three trailers, so they'll, they'll be fine. Um, and uh, it's, it's an amazing rescue. 14 draft horses and other horses too, but 14 draft horses, a lot of draft horses. How'd the auction assessment go for you? It was good on my end, but how was it? It went really well. I mean, um, this is a whole lot less criticals than we're used to. I'm sure we're gonna find a lot more once we get further diagnostics, x-rays, that sort of thing. Um, but the nice part about having a bunch of drafts is you have a lot of really mellow horses. They're all calm and chill. They're not hot. I'm kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop currently, but uh, it's going well. Yeah, we were able to put halters and touch every horse. Well, they're so. they're all. I mean, like they're just all standing there in a row back there, right now, waiting for us to tell them to do something. Mark my words, something will happen today. I don't know what it is yet, but we don't say these. Things. Maybe I'm just gonna wish it out of existence. I don't know. But. Yeah. Well, anyways, it went really well. And um, now we're gonna go check out the dog, the poor little doggy that was surrendered um, in the middle of all this. I just heard Angela say she might adopt this little dog. Keith says no. Hi, baby. It's a chihuahua. It's a Yorkie mix. That's not a chihuahua. No, that's a Yorkie. Hi, baby. How are you? Oh, we're going to trim those nails today, girl. We're going to do a pedicure. You need a widow bath. Will she let you pull up her lip without getting bit? I don't know. I haven't. She's been very gentle. She got more teeth than my chihuahua. She needs some dental, <clears throat> but uh, my chihuahua you has get her groomed had up. extractions because her teeth are really old. So I'm thinking about keeping her. I heard, yeah. But I think you should adopt she's her. 15. Look at this. So she scandal. just needs her teeth done and groomed <laughs> and nails. I do. I'm trying to get the mat on her. We gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. It's right in your eyeball. It's not okay. You're super sweet. She is. <clears throat> well, I think she should ride with you. We're gonna take that off. <gasps> oh, better! Oh, is it better? It's better! Oh, it's Yay! Oh, it's so See? That's it's so better! Happy. It's all better! That's so happy, baby. Oh, it's all better! You're so happy. Let's, do let's, do let's, no? let's do the rest. But now at least she's comfortable and she's realized that we're helping her because oh, it feels so much best. better to not have that clump in your eyeball. <laughs> so what do you think, Keith? I said no, but I think I, I lost the battle. Like <laughs> this is Angela's new baby. <clears throat> I am excited. I've been looking for a little doggy for a long time. I'm still, we got to get you help. Yeah. Oh, look at her she's tail. She's so cute. She's this is so, so cute. sad. Her whole tail oh, is look, matted. Look. Oh, it's all matted. Better have a place for Keith to sleep. 
It's a big house. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Anyway, I think she deserves to have some love. She's a little old doggy, and she's like 15 years old. She's like 15 years and old. And she's so she mad. Some love. I think we can give that to her till she's until the vet says it's not okay. Yeah. As long as you're happy. But the vet seems so far to think she's healthy, and or the vet techs do so. Oh, you Look just need, you need to so sweet. get all clean and snuggle under some sheets tonight. Yes. <laughs> they always say it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Uh, that's what they say. <laughs> There's your doggy. That's just a hairy rat. He's so cute. His little black eyes and black nose. And his, his curly hair. He has a personal problem with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being nice. His hair is so cute. There you go, Keith. Oh. I'm really cold. My feet, I, I didn't wear appropriate clothing, so I'm very cold. So if you move, the blood flows. Medical class. <laughs> Good job. There we go. have a very stubborn mule that does not want to get in the trailer and it's a draft mule so if you've heard the saying stubborn as a mule um, and then you multiply it by stubborn as a draft mule that's what we're dealing with right now Part of the biggest problem with uh, these draft horses is they don't know English. Uh, they probably all know Pennsylvania Dutch, and they don't know horse trailers either. So it's complicated, but looks like we got the last one in. So it, uh, if we we've never done a draft horse rescue of this size, and typically we only get one or two, uh, we had four one time, and I was like, wow. Now we've got 14, so we don't have enough draft horse halters and stuff. If we could lead them all on, they would have known what we wanted. But because they don't understand the English and they don't understand, you know, why we want them on a trailer, and you know, there's just there's a communication barrier between them and us right now. But we'll, we'll fix it in time. Everyone's loaded up and we are ready to hit the road. It's about a two and a half hour drive, and I think what we got like five hours of daylight left. So it's going to be an intake in the dark, but it's the way it is in the wintertime. Headed on a road trip, let's go, let's go. Washing every town we dip on the past. You're in charge of the tunes, just skip the ones that make the time just fly on by. We've made it back and uh, it's time to get all the horses unloaded. Owen and Jenna did make it here first and so when we pulled in, horses are already getting treatment and then the rest of the crew, they're behind us. Um, they were still getting their food and getting ready to hit the road. So we're coming in in stages today, which I actually think are really nice. I know it's in here somewhere. Gotta go under the five layers. Buried. 
So we have a draft over here with a really severely swollen leg. We're gonna take a radiograph to see if there's a fracture present. What is happening there? It's a crazy cellulitis. Wonder, I've seen it that bad before. What about, yeah. wonder if that is a crease or just swelling. Or a she gas tract. Yeah. yeah. But when you watch her walk from behind, you can see it's like a giant crease. They uh, are looking at his back leg. It looks like all it did was uh, work out one leg. So one leg's bigger than the other. Do we have those big body clippers that are plug-ins? So I don't know if you can see in the image, but there's a tract of gas that goes way deeply in here and then we've got infection in this foot. That degree of severity of a gas tract is pretty poor for this mare. Um, I was hopeful that we didn't have a major, really deep infection, but she does have a, a tract that, we weren't sure on the radiograph if it was actually in her leg or just in the skin, but it actually goes into her leg here. And then you can see it kind of communicates out the back of her foot. Um, the fact that her leg is this big means there's a lot of lymphatic involvement. So sometimes we can have improvement with that when we take care of the infection, but I'm worried with this mare that even if, even with really aggressive antibiotic therapy, the swelling is so great that those antibiotics aren't gonna get where they need to go. <laughs> Got an age doc. I could say we are only about, I know, I know. Are you scared on this side? I just side? gave him some xylosane so you could let him get drunk. Okay. I would say maybe 16. It's definitely infected. Like, smells bacterial. I don't you want to step on your toes. You're going to have you there to, to, okay. to feel what's going on. Dr. Scott and I like to just do things. So this horse is sedated. Yeah, just watch yeah. out, you guys. And uh, we're very much hoping that the horse will 100% not fall on our heater. We're gonna schedule this enucleation for Monday. We're gonna um, give him good pain meds, which he's already had, and um, some antibiotics. I would love for him to have 10 cc's of banamine SID. Um, if your weekend feeder can just pull it up and squirt it in his mouth, I think it'll be fine. He seems pretty tractable. We just need to figure out as far as what Doc's doing, what you're doing, yep, yep. and that way everyone's busy. Sounds good. Um, Tony, you can be in charge of that. Oh, fun. Okay. All right, Doc, let's let's do the x-rays and then delegation. we'll just go through the triage of the horses that need triage. We knew that this horse was wasn't going to make it with that leg and she is suffering and we are going to have to say the goodbye to her and give her the last act of kindness but um, we wish things could have been different. We wish her owner would have given her the last act of kindness a long time ago. Her back looks terrible but she's not painful and she's okay. only like 22 so I just told her told them to process her. So we are doing full intake. Um, we're doing vaccines. We're doing probios and electrolytes. Um, we are deworming and um, just a physical exam. But other than that, um, and we're microchipping. Thank you. She is ready to go. Yeah, 
he's painful. He's got a painful back. I'm not even gonna palpate further. Very painful on his withers. This horse is about 19. Um, he has a lot of pain on palpation of his withers and he has evidence that he is missing proprioception in both of his hind legs so he doesn't know where his legs are in space. Um, unfortunately, he's also blind in the right eye and it looks like he's got um, some vision issues also in his left eye so he can't see very well um, and he also doesn't know where his body is. I don't know if you guys caught, he, he actually ran into the gate coming through. So poor thing. Um, these findings are consistent with a spinal cord injury somewhere between his withers and his pelvis. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> this horse isn't very, so great on its legs, but it does have shoes. And when it looks gray like that, murky, is it, is it just a reflection or is there, is it cloudy in the eye? It's a little cloudy, maybe yeah. some little nuclear sclerosis or which is scarring or Yeah. So we are taking a look at this gelding who is quite old. Um, he's kind of generally weak, but he also has some delayed proprioception in his hind legs. So normally when we pull him over, they wanna step and place that leg right away. And this horse kind of kind of drags his toe over before placing it. He's also got some evidence of some discomfort in his back, but we're not totally done evaluating him yet. That hurt. I'm sorry. That's going to be challenging to get on a radiograph. I listen to your heart, buddy. He's got a grade two out of six heart murmur. Probably something congenital. Am I stealing your job, Tani? No. That's, you're doing a great job. I wonder if we could get somebody to hold the leg. Yeah, will he let you do that? I think he's got a. So, I think he's got a, a soft, a major soft tissue injury in that shoulder. Yeah, this horse can be turned out, but I don't want him to run around, like tear around. So we tell him not to. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I think he could be in one of the smaller areas of turnout. I don't want him to be able to, like, tear around. Uh, we're about to bring in uh, one of the horses that is pretty skinny, and we're gonna evaluate it and see what's what's going on with it. Um, so, if, go get her. Him, her. Here we come. Stocked up in the back. I don't know. I'd like to check her gait. Uh, Looks like she may have a defect in her back. Do we want to? Do you want to see her move around? Yeah. yeah. So she's got a bunch of um, scrapes back here, but she's got new hair growing in. So those definitely happened before the auction. We are going to sedate this mare so we can put the dental speculum and take a better, closer look at her teeth. So let's make sure she gets that. If you want to put her over there a little Your bit. Strangles on her. Yes. And it could just be weakness that she was, was having problems. So this horse, we're just checking her out. Um, she might possibly be pregnant. Um, so we are going to, um, that's the next one, thing on the list we're going to find out with her. Um, but she seems to be walking well. She's a little weak, but. Mm. 
she's been through a lot. Wow, that's um, pitiful. Yeah, her Winnie was very pitiful. She's weak. Poor baby. Fun. And um, so we'll see if she's pregnant. So if we do a pregnancy check on her, do you want her in the chute on the scale? Yeah. Or do we want to just sedate her or? Doc is preg checking the uh, Percheron mare. Let's see what he can find. I am not feeling a baby, but that don't mean anything if she just got rent six months ago. Well, I think she is really, but it's just out of reach. I would check her again in a couple of months. Uh, um, her heart rate is elevated just standing, so I think those eyes are painful. And that's aggressive. Um, I'm, I'm concerned, yeah. So what we're seeing in this mare's eyes, we can't definitively say until we do cytology and look for criteria of malignancy, but one of the um, tumor types that most commonly affects a horse eye is squamous cell carcinoma. And, um, this mare has a lot of the characteristics of that type of cancer, which is a malignant cancer. Um, she is in her upper 20s, so thankfully she's held weight really well, but um, I think that the kindest thing for her is to not ask her to, she'd have to have surgical removal of both eyes, and in the right, it looks like the tumor has invaded the tissue below the eye as well, so she'd probably have to have a pretty aggressive um, surgical procedure. She also has, really stinky breath and i don't know if you can see right here i can't her jaw is a little bit locked i can't move her jaw from side to side um, so she's got she looks great body condition score wise but she has some evidence of um, dental pain as well and then sometimes when their breath smells kind of stinky they can have an infection in their mouth he's got some atrophy by the stifle but nothing palpates pain painfully he has a delayed menace response on the left, but it is present on the left. Good boy, easy. 100% this is a gelding. This beautiful Gelding is only three years old. Um, he has pretty significant muscular atrophy on his left hind leg, so that indicates that he hasn't been using that left hind leg normally. Sorry, I'm cold, so my speech is slowed down. Um, however, he's not currently painful, and we need to try to get some radiographs and some more diagnostics to determine what his prognosis is. Um, we don't wanna make a decision on a horse that can have an acceptable quality of life, even if that's just being a pasture pet. So um, we are gonna schedule him for some more advanced diagnostics and go from there. This is a draft mule. It's a mare. Um, and she is getting all of her orals right now. Anyway, she's big, beautiful, and everyone loves her. Um, so we're concerned with this, this horse because of her body condition and her age, and that she is stocked up um, to do a dental evaluation on her. She has some pretty rough rough teeth going in so we've kind of just been talking back and forth on what's the best thing for her and going into winter and with her age and but just letting her hang out with us today um, during intake and we've been watching her and she's just she's very skinny so this poor mare is in her um, mid to upper 20s and we identified that she has a pretty significant problem with her mouth and 
We kind of went back and forth. We were hoping that fixing her teeth might improve things, but I think at her age and the severe low body condition score, we're worried about refeeding syndrome. Um, I'm also worried that she might have more going on than just really poorly maintained teeth. Um, and then she also is pretty stocked up, so her hind legs are both swollen, which could be an infection. Could just be from um, standing when she's not used to standing, but um, we don't want this mare to end up going down. It's gonna be really cold in the 20s, and um, the level of intense care that she would need to be rehabilitated um, and still possibly have a, a poor outcome are pretty high. So. Um, as hard as it is, we want to give them all a chance. I think the kindest thing for this mare is the last act of kindness. We don't want her to end up going down. Um, she is very weak, so we don't want her to end up going down overnight when somebody isn't here to find her and end up suffering. And one thing too, it seems like the stress of an auction for an old emaciated horse is just too much. And in some cases, our fans are like, why don't you wait a little while? And there's, it's really, really sad when a horse goes down and they can't get up and they know they're they're going and at that point we feel like we we have failed them if they go down and they can't get up and they know they're dying and then we have to ha you know it's emergency euthanasia because we can't get them up we'd much rather say goodbye to a horse when they're able to be feeling love and feeling okay and, and looking at their long-term health and happiness and the potential with her body condition is just it's with considering all everything in the scenario and the weather and it's we really feel this is the best thing. If somebody had brought her to a vet clinic and said, Here's my old horse, yeah. I want her put down before winter. Yeah. It there would be been any it would question. be any no questions at all. And that's sometimes what we have to look at is, you know, we stepped into those shoes and we have to make tough decisions. Um this beautiful draft mule. Um, is 20 years old and she has some um, evidence of some liquid accumulation around her carpal joints, which are basically kind of her knees in the front. They're symmetrical on both sides. So it could just be that she has some arthritis and that she's building some fluid up there, but um, we wanna take some x-rays and make sure that she doesn't have bony lesions that are causing discomfort in those knees. So we'll take those x-rays on Monday and go from there. pizza but I did speak to them about tomorrow was our Christmas party so they donated a hundred dollars towards our subway fund Woo. so tomorrow everybody gets their own sub sandwich Yay! so we 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 love pizza we definitely we love pizza, a lot of pizza but and, and, I, and I can tell you why pizza is very popular with the rescue life because I was thinking about this we eat a lot of pizza around here but the reason we like pizza is because we can be up here working. We can just scoop up a little piece of pizza, keep working, Correct. shove it in our mouth, and go back to work, and then we're like, whoop, and like, so it's easy to eat. So we're not like having to like hold it and like, or sit down, chow down on a burrito. It's, it's rescue food. It's, it's on the go rescue food. It but is. a Christmas party we won't be on the go. Correct. I did want to remind everybody we are doing the white elephant game, so bring a present 20 or less. Do you, you would post like that in the group? I did. <laughs> I posted it, but still people said it and not see it, so I am letting everyone know. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to get mine tonight. Perfect. Let's put her down as 26 and she needs a sedated, really thorough dental exam. Let's make sure we do strangles and electrolytes and let's hold on the other stuff and reevaluate when we get a better look at her teeth.
So we only have two more horses left. We're gonna get them finished up and then I believe we're all ready to head home after this. Uh, it's been a long day for some of us. And yeah, other than that, it's been pretty smooth. So yeah, two more horses, we're excited. Go. Oh, you can see in one eyeball. Okay. She's got some mainly corneal damage, I think. Yeah. So I'm not sure it's moon blindness. Left lung sounds good. I'm gonna go over on the other side in the dark. <laughs> she's got oh, a blind in her. Oh, well, she's vision impaired. She is visual in her right eye. Uh, I gotta turn a light on so I can see this eye. So that's what a cataract looks like. Hi. Oh, I'm just looking at her mouth. Um, you can do all of the intake things on her. Okay. It's just in the left eye, her right eye is visual and she has partial vision. Um, she, it's, it's pretty minimal, but she does have a little bit of vision and doesn't, the eye does not need to come out and it's not painful. The difference between a really high quality and a lower quality stethoscope is usually the really yeah. subtle things. So like if you're trying to tell if a murmur is, there's three valves, pulmonic, aortic, mitral, you might be able to hear a murmur with a really inexpensive stethoscope. So far so good. Um, he does not have a heart murmur. His lungs on the left sound pretty great. Um, he probably needs his teeth floated, but his incisors look okay, and I'm gonna go over and listen on the other side. So do you confirm 25? I said 22. Okay. Thank you. Brad's on both fetlocks. He's getting 21 horses and then 14 of them being drafts. That's We've never had that many draft horses before. I think the, the most might have been like four and we thought that was impressive. We're at the auction, we're trying to figure out how many draft horses fit in the 24 foot trailer and we learned some things today. We're like, okay, so eight fits comfortably in the big trailer. We've never had that problem before. We should add up the total pounds of horses that, that, that we helped. represented in this point. Yeah, yeah. 21 is a pretty light number, but you're right. That's going to go on poundage wise. We're yeah, up big. The trailers pounds. had a lot of weight, but I think today overall it went great and um, it, it was rather quickly. It might not seem quickly because the sun went down. We're here in the cold, but um, it was uh, how many hours did it take us? We didn't start till 2 15. Yeah. Two. yeah, but under four hours, I think. So that's, that's really amazing to treat that many horses and make sure they're all good and comfortable. So did a great job and we'd like to thank all of our donors for making this possible and your support. And um, yeah, there's only one more auction rescue planned for this year. And then there won't be any more auction rescues because we'll be in the new year. And then we'll be doing auction rescues then, of course. So yeah, this year is wrapping up. Well, what happened to 2022? It's gone. I'm not sure. Anyway, we've had fun. Yep. Absolutely. Me. <laughs> what I knew we had, we don't was have a de facto really employee of the quarter because I'm the only employee who's still here from first quarter. Okay, well, just saying. Winning, <laughs> winning by default, still winning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
So I put her at the end so she can't kick anybody, but she's nice to people. She's just mean to other horses. I think he'll be okay for his fronts, but his hinds, he was being really touchy. Okay. When he was kicking, it was kind of down, like not at me. So you, it might just be because he's like, it tickles, but just beware on his hinds. Yes. Um, so Avalon is a Belgian draft horse, and um, a lot of them come from the Amish, and they're used to using like these big sto uh, draft stocks to trim them. And um, it's safer for the farrier, it's safer for the handler, because um, they're just used to being in them, and it makes the horse more comfortable too if they're used, if like if they're trained with to have their feet done in stocks. Um, and the stocks have a way you can kind of put their, like tie their feet up so that you can not have to hold their foot up while it's being trimmed um, because their, their legs are a lot heavier than normal size horses. So we're putting her in there just to make it safer and more comfortable for everyone working with her. Easy, 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 easy. Definitely not the worst draft foot I've ever seen. Though. No, no, she didn't Considering have. Considering that they don't get their feet picked out as often usually. <laughs> yeah, she didn't have bad feet at all. We're going to move the Christmas tree fully decorated from the front of the office to the vet barn where we're having our uh, employee Christmas party and so we're going to try to see if we can do this without hurting anybody and then and she asks me oh. oh wow they really did some they really did some engineering to get it to stay Don's got it Don's got it <laughs> okay so well, what she is, what are, here we go <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we get together here, Lord. So, I will pass these out to everybody, and please look at the back. There is numbers on them, one through 22. So whatever number is on the back will be your number for the white elephant game as well, okay? Oh, you put it under the tree. Right? Yeah. So, let's see. Well, it's a Grinch mug. Is that what it actually is? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're number two. Look at me. Okay. Grinch mug. Ooh, some bath salts for a bath salt. <laughs> with, with my kisses. While I eat my Reese's. Theater. Oh, that's water? Energy water. I want that game. Do you want that game? Do you really want that game? Oh, you don't need to ask. You can get to take it. You want to take it. Oh, I like this. Oh, you like it? Okay, what's oh, the oh, there we go. She's got some money. <laughs> 
Depending on what culture you are, so you can read <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I have like four of these. ago uh, I did like this great big concert in Holland Hall, Tennessee where 11 people showed up and these are two of the 11. Yay. <laughs> so it was uh, captivating. We locked the doors to make sure no one else laughed, right? <laughs> hey, thank you so much for the wonderful gift. I got a $2 bill and a tie. I thank you so much. Y'all didn't have to. You pulled together. I appreciate it. I'm going to do a song right now that uh, actually got me the gig at the Hole in Wall, the Rock House Cafe. That you heard the song on the radio. I'm like, you're the one that heard it on the radio. Y'all know that the Spotify is going around, you know, on Spotify. I'm going to have you know that I got 11 followers. Woo! Yeah. 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 I couldn't believe that when I got the numbers this morning, you know how they wallpaper, they wrap it for you? Hey, we got some good singers here today. We got Tanner, we got Christine, huh? Anyway. If it's too loud, let me know I can turn it up. I'm running on empty in a hammy down for Mary Lane. This is what they got 11 for. Yes, yeah, my kind of cool.
that? Oh, I don't really sing. Yeah. 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 Well, where were you when I had those 11 people in the crowd? <laughs> Tammy, you said you're Johnny Cash's niece, is that right? I worked with uh, Uncle Tommy one time out in Oklahoma. Well, my name is Sean, and for the whole weekend, he called me Steve. I'm like, all right, Tim, I'm with you. <laughs> when I hear the train coming, it's rolling around the bend. He had the nerve and he had the blue and never saw a horse like Tennessee stuff. Sean Carson, uh, independent country songwriter, singer, and I want to say that I am here today and I'm part of a great crowd. I met some wonderful people here today at Horse Plus Humane Society. Um, from I'm going to get the dates wrong. Somebody help me out here. From November or from December, December 11th, 11th to the 14th. To the 14th. There's no fees on adopting dog. dogs. And look at this pretty dog right here, Scout. Um, Scout is absolutely my buddy. Uh, if you don't scoop her up soon, I think someone else might well. And we've got chicken wing over here, right? Now you're, you're gonna wonder, how do we find out about all this information? There's any kind of uh, social platform that you can think of, Horse Plus Humane Society is part of it, and they're great folks here. Um, come down here and get yourself a dog, a cat. It's the only open admission adoption agency that I know of around this area, am I right? Is, there, is that right? See, chicken wing agrees. So and listen, here's, here's another thing, too, to think about, too. Some people think, well, um, I don't have room for animals, or the last thing I need is another uh, a cat or a dog or a horse or anything like that. But you can always donate, too. If you find a little something that uh, if you want to just give, you're in that giving spirit, you can donate. Just donate your time. Donate some money. There's ways to do that on, on the sites. Get a hold of these fine folks here. And I had a story earlier about uh, one of my favorite horses, a Pasofino horse, and I thought, oh, oh that's a good sign. Um, that... Horses typically tend to be a lot of money, and I was at a horse auction one time um, for a whole entirely different reason. 
and I was walking by this trailered horse, uh, Ponce Fino horse, and I looked into the horse's eyes, and it was just, I thought, I gotta have this horse. I don't know anything about it, it's gotta have it. And it was not going to have uh, a very long life left. You know what happened at horse auctions a lot of times. And I spoke to the guy, and he said, you know what, if you can just take him off my trailer, um, he's yours. And I fell in love with the little guy. He was born um, somewhat crippled in the front end. He had a chest that was very, very narrow. Cool thing about that was we got his confidence up to where you could ride him. Uh, not that we did a whole lot just because of his build, but we were able to ride him. The funny part was when it was snow, he would try to kick. Every time he tried to kick, he would almost fall over and, you know, of course, get a little bit embarrassed. But um, it was, I can tell you, if you're not a horse owner, if you've never been a horse owner, they do something to the human soul that uh, is hard to explain. I've read books on it, I've read articles on it, but until you're actually part of that realm, part of that world, it really does calm your soul. It really does. So you often wonder who rescues who, but in a case like this, um, there's plenty of great animals here for great causes, all ages. Uh, we got Scout, look at Scout. You got a kisses? Where's kisses? Where's my kisses? You kidding me? I won't get any camera time if I stop up and give you kisses. But yeah, Horse Plus Humane Society. Now check them out, gang. I mean, take it from me. I just got done doing a performance here. Wonderful folks. Uh, and like I said, if you don't have it in your space right now to get an animal, uh, just donate. Even if you just do that. Once again, my name is Sean Carson. Horse Plus Humane Society. Do it. Checking a sneak peek first. Oh, it's a white fox. Okay, so I can't take a sneak peek. At least not yet. Oh, it's taped. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. Ha, ha, ha.